In this video, I want to discuss five money mistakes that the ultra wealthy never make. These are great money tips, and if you're able to avoid these common mistakes, you could probably save thousands of dollars down the road. Now, mistake number one is buying daily use items individually. So according to Mark Cuban, when you see a sale on any of your reusable consumables that you'll have to have, when they're on a huge sale on Amazon, buy them, because your chances are their prices are gonna go up. But that's a real savings that you get to put in your pocket. Now, what he really means is that if you're gonna buy something that's a super necessary item of daily use that you know you're gonna need later on, you might as well buy it in bulk. The idea here is that if you're able to get toothpaste, razor blades, or even toilet paper at a 50% discount, you're essentially getting a 50% return on your money, which is indeed a great deal. The S&P 500, the stock market, typically returns about 8% a year on average over a long period of time, as well as credit card APRs are around 20%. So even if you pay off your credit card, you're getting about a 20% return on your money, which is still a lot lower than just buying things in bulk. Plus, think about all the time and hassle it's gonna save you. You're saving time, you're saving gas and money. The worst money mistake here is to buy things at high retail prices, especially at fancy grocery stores. For example, your Whole Foods of the world. Go instead to places like Sam's Club or Costco or even check out the best deals on Amazon and Walmart.com. It's going to save you a lot. Mistake number two is impulsively spending. So a lot of smart billionaires are actually surprisingly frugal with their money, and it's one of the ways that they actually accumulated all of their wealth. In fact, Sarah Stanley, the author of The Next Millionaire Next Door, surveyed over 600 wealthy individuals in America and found that they all had three similar traits and one of those was being frugal and not spending excessively. Now we can actually see the evidence of being frugal in some of the top billionaires in the world. So for example, Warren Buffett, the chairman and CEO of Berkshire Hathaway, still lives in the same house that he bought for $31,500 in 1958. So that home today is worth about $650,000, which still seems like a lot, but compared to his net worth of $108 billion, it actually only represents 0.0006% of his actual net worth, which is pretty dang low. Now, Bill Gates, instead of wearing an Omega watch, famously wears an SEO watch. That's something that you can literally buy on Amazon for $46. So it's probably a mistake that most of us wear a watch worth thousands of dollars. Well, according to them, yeah, it probably is. Lastly, just another example of frugality, the late IKEA CEO. His name was Ingvar Kamprad. He usually rode the bus and flew economy class on airlines, even though himself, he was worth over $50 billion. So this is just to say that if you have the option of spending more versus spending less, typically the ultra wealthy like to spend a little bit less. All right, mistake number three is succumbing to lifestyle creep. So there are plenty of people that are making over six figures these days, and they still live paycheck to paycheck. That's actually possible. I know that sounds incredibly absurd, but imagine you make $150,000 a year. Your net pay in California will be just over $98,000 a year, or about $8,167 per month. If you rent a place for $3,500 a month, which is not unheard of here in California, and you have a car payment of 500, well, that's already $4,000 gone of your net pay. Then you add in car insurance, eating out at fancy restaurants, perhaps shopping at a designer store, maybe you get a massage or a facial every now and then, you can see how this really adds up. And this is a huge reason why 78% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck. The super wealthy know that after a certain point, a good life is not tied to what they spend their money on. So Steve Jobs says that he was about over a million dollars when he was 23, over $10 million when he was 24, and over a hundred million dollars when he was 25. And he never did it for the money. It was not the most important thing. The most important thing was the company, the people, the products they were making, what they were going to enable people to do with these products. 
Steve Jobs really wanted to focus on his products and his passion, which was to build companies and as a byproduct of this passion, money would come along the way. And you also notice that he was quite simple in nature. He would always wear the same thing, which is a black turtleneck and jeans. So while your coworkers and your friends might continue to upgrade Jordan. their lifestyle, you might consider to live below your means and compound your wealth instead. And what you want to avoid here is basically making six figures or more, but ending up in this cycle of consumerism and living paycheck to paycheck. There are many people out there who keep track of their monthly spending for years and years, even when their income increases and the lifestyle remains almost the same. It's more about not spending lavishly, even if you can, and instead saving that amount for the long run. Now you can spend money on the things that you enjoy, but don't always make spending your habit. Like you can buy your coffee or sushi if you'd like, but hey, don't just spend all your money on goodies that you regret getting later, especially when you get short on cash or your credit card bill accumulates. Okay, mistake number four is being emotional about investing. So the best investors are long-term investors and they're thinking about long-term horizons. So even with short-term fluctuations, they aren't really panic selling or really selling due to their emotions. Just as Warren Buffett says, his investing philosophy is that he knows what markets are gonna do over a long period of time. They're gonna go up, but in terms of what's gonna happen in a day or a week or a month or a year, he doesn't bother about that and doesn't worry about those fluctuations in the market. It's important to mention that Google CEO and billionaire Eric Schmidt even goes so far to say that you should not even try to beat the market. In this article from CNBC, he says, short-term trading isn't gonna make you rich and don't try to beat the market. He also says, don't try to pick stocks. Instead, think long-term, invest in index funds and Vanguard funds. Now, this is the same exact strategy that Warren Buffett tells most people, and that's the inexpensive strategy of investing in index funds. Mistake number five is wasting money on fees. So the ultra-rich know that fees are a waste of time and money. It's more that they're really hyper aware of any inefficiencies in their personal financial life, and they're always paying their bills on time. So that means they're gonna take advantage of features like auto pay to avoid late charges. They're also really mindful of bank fees. Many banks will charge you a service fee for having a bank account, which is surprising, but oftentimes you might get an additional fee if you don't keep a specific minimum account balance. So make sure you aren't making any of these mistakes when it comes to your own personal finances, because these fees will add up and compound negatively over time. Now, in terms of fees for investing, this is something the ultra rich pay attention to. The average expense ratio or yearly fee of a mutual fund these days is between 0.5 and 1%. That means on an investment of a million dollars, if it's a 1% fee, you're paying upwards of 10 thousand dollars per year just to have your money invested in a mutual fund billionaires know that every fee will eat into their compound returns and they're cognizant of every single basis point which is basically a term to describe one hundredth of a percent so this chart shows how an investment portfolio with a four percent annual return over 20 years when the investment either has an ongoing fee of 0 0.25 percent 0.5 percent or one percent Notice how the fees affect the investment portfolio over 20 years. In 20 years, a difference in just 0.25% of a fee can reduce your gains by $10,000 over 20 years. And if there's a difference of 0.75%, it could reduce your portfolio value by 30 grand. All right, so that's pretty mind blowing. That's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoy the video. Thanks for watching. Do leave a like and we'll see you guys soon.